Hey guys, welcome to part one of my project log of the Leopard 2A7 German main battle tank by Meng in 135th scale. Um, what this is, is it's going to be a three-part video series on me building, reviewing, building, and painting. Uh, sort of build review, essentially. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to take a quick look, or a quick look on what's in the box. Um, as you can see, this is still wrapped in shrink foil. I literally just got this a few minutes ago delivered. Um, we'll take a look at what's inside it. It's a pretty, pretty hefty box, as you can see here. It doesn't even close all the way, and still in, still in shrink wrap. So I'm pretty sure that's how they packaged it at Mang. Go ahead and open and see what's inside. I've never opened one of these before. I have no idea what to expect, actually. So, your guess is as good as mine. It's what's in here. Let's take a look. Actually, before we do that, I'll just show you guys the actual box art on here. What the box is, box looks like. box looks like nothing really specific. I also went ahead and picked up the uh, AK interactive paint set that goes along for this kit so I can go ahead and just use the paints out of the um, out of the bottles. I wouldn't have to do too much mixing when I go ahead and paint this eventually. But for the time being let's take a look at what's inside. It's a very very big box packed full of uh, full of goodies here. I'm actually going to have enough room for all this stuff, but I'm going to do my best. Put the box over. Oh, I'm dropping stuff already. And this is what the box comes in. What comes in the box? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 individually wrapped sprue bags. The hull, upper and lower in the same bag, the turret, clear parts, photo etch, decals, more photo etch, and then instruction booklet. Let's put this all aside for the time being and take a very quick look at the instruction manual here. I'm not going to spend too much time going over this. Uh, it's an instruction manual just like any other, I'm sure. To give you guys a better idea of what to expect, the build starts out like all other armored boats with the bottom hull, the suspension, the running gear, the wheels, the tracks. You put the top hull on there, you detail that, and then you work on the turret. Now this 2A7 Leopard is basically the, um, the latest addition or the latest upgrade of the Leopard introduced into the German army. I think they only have something like 20 vehicles in operation currently, so I can't really speak to the complete accuracy of this kit. I'm sure they may have left off some details, and I'm sure this will, this will be missing details in a couple of months as they make improvements and additions in the field. Now, as far as uh, painting guide, there's really only one painting guide. I don't know, let's see. Looks like there's three marking options. Um, that's the, the color schemes themselves are the same. It's just where the decals go. Different placement. Uh, these things are painted by a robot in a factory, so every tank will be the same. And there's a cat that's about to attack me here, so forgive me for showing it over. But that's the instructions. Uh, cut and dry. Looks like you have. Let's see, looks like a total of 28 steps. Um, I have built a few main kits in the past, and instructions are usually pretty clear, pretty concise, uh, very few errors, although there are a couple here and there. Uh, especially with uh, new tool kits and, and, and all that, there's, there's always a chance for there to be some errors. But uh, instructions look clear, look, you know, what you would come to expect from main kits, which are quality kits. So that's the instruction manual. Let's take a look at what I'm going to look at. Let's take a look at this first. That's what I have here. Open this up. Let's see what we got. So, this is the turret from. Looks like the turret from. 
the original 2A5, I believe, or 2A4s even. Same style, same shape. Um, and then you would obviously add the applique armor on top here and the stowage bit and all that stuff. There's a closer look, maybe. So the details are awesome. Again, as one would come to, to, to expect from Ming at this point. The anti-slip surfaces are awesome, very fine. Very well made. I don't see any... Let's see if this helps focus a little bit. I don't see any casting issues. Yeah, there's not even, I mean, there's a couple of injection injection pin marks obviously inside, but since this doesn't come with a uh, interior, that won't be a problem. Yeah, it looks uh, pretty darn good. So that's the turret. Put that inside, put that in this bag, I don't want to get it scratched up. Let's take a look at the hull. Again, I think as far as quality goes, there's really, there's really, there, there really won't be any surprises here. Every main kit I, I've looked at so far, and I have both the uh, the latest Abrams and the Russian T90 variants that they have put out. They're just just gorgeous kits, so I'm not uh, not expecting anything anything less. Uh, here's some poly caps. Now let's look at the bottom hole here. And as you can see, great detail. I do say great detail for for actually this is a quite well quite detailed, very detailed for a modern tank. Suspension. There's a hatch down here. All very very nicely detailed. All very crisp. The. Uh, Weld lines here are very, very nice. As you can see, again, no, uh, no surprises, no disappointment. Really, it's just what at least I have come to expect from Ming at this point in the game. Here's the upper hull again. The um, the anti-slip surfaces, wonderfully molded, very fine detail. And I don't see any blemishes. Yeah, and the only thing, and obviously that's that's the weld, uh, the welded panels over here. It's all raised. Obviously, the welded detail has to be raised. It's, it's going to be interesting as far as weathering that goes. We'll see. But here's the uh, anti-slip surfaces. Again, wonderfully done. Great detail, well done. I'm sure it goes together perfectly. I don't think there's going to be any fit issues here. Really, this is only a dry fit too with a piece of sprue that I would have to cut off for this to fit precisely, but just to give you guys a better idea, I don't think there's going to be any problems, any fit problems at least with this. As expected, once again from Ming. Um, not sure how detailed I'm going to get with these screws. There's a couple of repeat ones, I do know that. Um, let's keep going, at least for now, some of the, some of the finer details. We'll see how I'm doing on time. Let's we'll see if I want to go in any further. Sorry, there's, a, there's an 
imprint on the box. I want to see what it says. It's just a manufacturing imprint. The clear parts. Just take a look. There's not very many of them. It's literally essentially just the periscopes. They are packed in two separate poly bags. One and then another one to protect it from getting scratched. But this one just slides off. Maybe I don't think, I guess not. So I'm gonna have to cut it off. Alright, let's take a look at the clear parts here. Again, very uh very well done. There's there's no blemishes that I can tell at least. Very well made. Good. I got a good job to make. They, they, once again, I've taken a look at a few of their kits, and I've never had any uh, any complaints about them. As far as the quality goes, I mean, between Mang and, and Dragon Armor and uh, Tacomb's another one, Bronco, even Trump Trumpeter nowadays, but their newer kits. It's really hard to hard to pick out too many faults. I mean, you get a few fit issues here and there, a few manual issues here and there. But as far as quality and the newer the newer kits, it's it's hard to really find any fault. Uh, here's P. Here's uh, I think these are the engine grills or the engine um, fans rather. Show you how thin this is. Pretty thin piece. But again, just. Quality, no, uh, no issues that I can see at least. Just looking at it really quickly. And the bag closes so back on me, so bear with me while I fumble around here trying to get this thing back in the bag. And as I said, the plan is for this video to basically be the inbox review of what you get in the box. And this is a fairly new kit. I'm not sure if there have been any other reviews. And if there have, you should probably go watch those instead of mine, because uh, I don't like listening to myself talk. I doubt anybody else does. I'm not going to remove these photo etch parts out of the individual bags, but Here's another sprue, a photo etch, same thickness as the uh, grills. I don't know why those are actually separate. I haven't, I'll just get four or two, I have no idea. Um, and here's some panel. I think this is actually part of the uh, stowage box. Look at the turret there. That. Now let's take a look at the decals. Decals, decals, call them what you like. I've been watching so many other wonderful modelers on YouTube. And a lot of them say decals, some of them say decals. I haven't figured out which way I want to go yet, but for, for this video we'll stick with decals. I'm sure the next one might be decals. The next two minutes might be decals even. What is this? I think this is for either the mirrors or the headlights or something or other. It's a reflective, reflective sticker by the looks of it. I don't know what this is, but it's here. It comes in the kit, whatever it is. So we'll figure that part out in the next video when we're actually building the kit. I hope to have. Yeah, I think it's a piece of uh, a piece of aluminum actually. Them. I hope to have um, the build video up maybe a week, no more than two, after I put up the review video. And the painting video, which will be part three, I hope to have up a couple of weeks after the build video. Uh, decals are made by Mang. I'm going to take them out just to see if there's any sheen on them or what the deal is. There's also a uh, piece of string down back here. I think that's for the uh, tow cable. Which I don't know how I feel about string for the tow cable, to be honest with you. If there's 
plastic provided in the uh, in the kit, I might go with that instead, just because the string tends to fray when you paint it, and it looks ends up looking like string, which I don't like. Okay, the decals are cartograph, so I'm sure most of you know what to expect from them. They're very nice, good condition decals. I don't know why I keep holding it the wrong way. Sorry. I apologize for the camera shaking. That's my 22-pound cat jumping off the table that I'm filming this on. Yes, it's a monster. It's a beast. But, um, yeah, decals look great. Uh, so far, everything looks good. Crisp detail, but let's get into the nitty-gritty and actually take a look at some of the smaller parts, some of the more fiddly parts, to see if that same detail carries over. I'm just going to put the string back in here loosely. Again, if this is for the tow cable, I don't plan on using it. Yeah, you can already see... I don't know if the camera will pick up on this, but you can already see it's starting to fray. As uh, soon as I hit, or as soon as I get this even somewhat moist with paint, it'll just fray all over the place, so I'd rather not use it, period. Uh, so let's see if the kit comes with actual plastic molded tow cables, but for now, let's take a look at this. Group A, the road wheels. Two identical screws. Get a good detail. Yes. Get great detail on this. They're very well made. These are brand new molds, keep that in mind. So I mean, it's what you can expect from brand new molds, it's it's going to be very, very well, uh, very well cast, very good detail, very crisp detail, it's, uh, I wouldn't call it a soft plastic, I wouldn't call it a br brittle plastic, it's kind of in the middle, dark gray, in the middle kind of plastic, which I guess works for me. Here we go, this is the tracks. These are the tracks, rather. Um, as with all main kits, as far as I'm aware, at least, these are workable tracks. Multi-piece workable tracks that come with a little... I don't want to take one of these off. I not knock anything off. That come with a little jig, which is... This piece right here, which basically helps you assemble the tracks. Um, there are, let's see, actually, no, no, there aren't. There's some injection pin marks, or ejection pin marks, or injection pin marks, whatever you want to call them. Again, uh, I'm sure I'll be using the other later on. There are some ejection pin marks on the insides of these, but these are the insides. This, these rubber portions is what you'll actually be seeing, so there's no pin marks on these, no problems there. Again, beautiful quality, well cast, so you've got this jig over here, you've got the pins, you cut this one piece off, let's see if I can point at something, grab a brush, so you cut one of these, uh, one of these, what is it, how many is it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Make sure I'm not, I'm not BSing you guys over here. Pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, I'm not BSing you guys over here. So you cut one of these off. You place enough tracks in your jig over here. You move these over, you glue them in, and you've got workable tracks. Now, how long that actually takes? I've never built one of these uh, one of these main track kits. I guess whatever you want to call it. I've never built main tracks before. Um, I even tend to stay away from magic tracks if I can. I'll go with the uh, 
creel tracks, the metal tracks, which are a huge pain to build. I hate building them, but they look awesome. So I usually go with those over anything else. That said, this kit will be built straight out of the box, so there won't be any aftermarket purchases for it. So I'll be using the tracks provided by Ming, so we'll see how they build up. But from everything, from everything I've read, from everything I've heard, they build up perfectly well. As, again, as one would expect, and as, as I have come to expect, at least from Mang, as far as the quality goes. Again, two identical sprues, uh, looks like some engine grills, possibly, or engine grill covers, uh, suspension. Here's your, here's your running gear. Here's what looks like your idler. idler. Another piece of your idler, some caps maybe, some spare tracks, some other details, tow hooks, clamps, uh, uh, more suspension parts here. So these two identical screws are your suspension. Essential. All right, let's move on here. Hopefully I'm not boring you guys to tears by now. If I am, I apologize. Also trying to wrap this up before the wife gets home, so I can clean up this mess that I'm slowly making over here. Let's see. This is this looks like a this looks like some additional armor for the bottom side of the hull. This looks like a piece for let's say for the top of the hull. This is probably uh, driver hatches. Here's your side skirts. Along with multiple other pieces that I have no idea what they are, but they all look pretty, pretty nice. Pretty nice. I'll give you guys a close up on all this stuff here. So, also as I make more of these videos, I'm going to work on uh, on my lighting here. Right now, I've got two of my two of my modeling lamps that I'm using for lighting and on, it looks good on, on the screen that I'm looking at that I'm recording through my camera but I'm not actually sure how it's going to come out so I will continue to work on better lighting and by the looks of it it looks like it should at least be good enough for the time being until I can fine tune my setup let's do this bag next we have four bags to go this is the barrel this is you know one of the it's one of my few complaints about main kits, and, and to this day I don't know why they're doing this, is the two-piece barrels. There's a couple of pieces of plastic in here, but they're, they're nothing but trash. So I don't know why Ming insists on going with two-piece barrels. Again, brilliant quality. Brilliant quality on the plastic you will end up with a seam down the middle, which, I mean, again, is no huge deal. There's a little bit of flash on some of these, which... As I can't say I'm really disappointed, but... And by a little, I do mean a minuscule, minuscule amount. I mean, this isn't... This isn't kit breaking by any means, but, again, there's still a little bit of flash. Anyways, I don't understand when, why Mang keeps uh, casting these barrels as a two-piece two-piece set uh, I'm surprised they don't do they don't do one piece here's another part for the upper hull I think this is more reinforced armor here for the turret turret basket um, and here is this wonderful little piece of not the turret basket I'm sorry the turret bin this wonderful piece right here, I would imagine, goes to the turret basket. That's what it looks like, or some kind of handle. Anyways, come take a closer look at this chicken. Check out the casting on this thing. I mean, this is a this is a one-piece kit with a little swirl in there, right there. 
It's actually some really good quality with very, very minimal flash, and that's another thing speaking to that. Some of the some of the handles very I mean these are these are thin. I don't even I don't even uh, most dragon handles aren't even this thin. And there is very little flash to be had on these, so that's that's actually quite impressive. Very impressed with these these little parts on I guess the only downside to this would be I'm going to have to be very careful when I go to assemble these and cut them off the screw because they are so thin I would imagine it's kind of easy to break these off so that, that that's one thing and you know I don't know if that was me just now I think it was this here is broken off this here is broken off again nothing that can't be repaired but just be warned handle your screws very very carefully as these are very, very, very thin parts. They will break quite easily, as you can see. So, word of warning. Handle carefully. But, again, something that can be easily repaired. I go to assemble the kit. So, not a huge, huge deal, but still. Better be, better to be careful and not have to do the repair work afterwards, you know. Okay, here's the back end of the tank, and again, I don't know why I'm showing you guys this upside down. Here's the back end of the tank. Um, the exhaust grills. Looks like uh, engine covers, or engine grill covers, or just engine covers, or just covers. Here's some of the applique armor that goes, I think, on the side of the tank by the side skirts, I would imagine. That's pretty cool. Here's some, what I would imagine are hatches or covers again with some of the anti-slip surface, which looks really nice. It's very fine, very thin, but it'll do the job. I think it'll take a wash very, very nicely. And you can see little patches of these anti-slip surfaces on quite a few of these parts. Just to give you guys a better idea, here is yet again shot of a few smaller parts, no idea what they actually go to, but just so you can see these are obviously uh, for the uh, the cables as well as some more handles, some more bars. Here's another very impressively cast piece. Again, the quality, quality very, very good. Just be careful, once again, with the, uh, the smaller parts. I can, I can almost see how this would turn into a nightmare if I managed to break more of these off. So far, I've only broken two off, but there's enough there that, realistically, I can see how that would become quite unpleasant. I broke more off and a little more time consuming to fix some of those I might even be better off bending some copper wire of that thickness I'll see how we go how it goes when uh, when we get to the assembling stage anyways uh, next sprue sprue G not that it matters because I haven't been telling you guys any other sprue numbers but this is sprue G smoke launchers oops where am I here we go smoke launchers Looks like the MG over here. What looks like more smoke launchers here. More cable. This might be part of the jack assembly here, actually. That looks that's really impressive too. Take a look at the detail on that. Hopefully you guys can see it. That's impressive. Is this stowage? Bags. Definitely bags. I think this is actually a little bit of stowage here. Which also looks really, really good. The detail on here is quite well done. I would have to do the 
this upside down because now the camera's hitting my tripod. Or rather, I'm hitting the uh, tripod with the sprue. Again, very well made, very well cast. Detail on there, some cloth detail. I think those are I think those are accessory bags of some or stowage bags of some kind. We'll find out as we build the, the tank. I have absolutely, if you haven't noticed yet, I have very little knowledge of modern armor. I'm mainly a World War II kind of guy, German armor especially. As far as the newer stuff goes, I have very little knowledge apart from the fact that it looks awesome. So I buy it. And this is the primary reason the A7 looks so different from all the other variants is the extra armor that extends the turret to give it that, that menacing evil look instead of that boxy look that the previous models have, the previous versions had. You guys a better look at closer look at this again. Um, anti anti skid surfaces on these look very very nice, very well detailed. Just a nice kit in general. Very nice kit. A little bit of flash on the inside in some of these these here especially, but again nothing that a little bit of patience will remove. Um, again, great looking details on all of this. Not as many parts as I thought. It's it's a huge box. Not as many sprues as I thought, I guess. I think the... I don't remember. I don't remember correctly. I think the Abrams comes with more. But I think the Abrams is also a bigger box, actually. Now that I mention it. But this is the box. Let me see if I can grab my aprons. That's also still sitting in a box from a very poor video review that I did on the kit. I might actually redo that one for you guys because that first one was awful. Let me see. Yeah, actually, you know what? The Abrams does come in a much bigger box. So, I take that back. The main kit, or the um, Leopard kit, is much smaller than the Abrams. Let's see if there's a part count on here somewhere on the box, or do I have to look at the instruction manual? I think I'm going to have to look at the instruction manual, which really doesn't matter that much if you guys are that interested. And I'm sure you can find it online without a problem. Uh, same size of box, just again, Abrams was much thicker, much thicker, so Abrams has come with more. Anyways, um, I bought this because I thought it looked awesome. I really had no other no other uh, agenda in mind when I bought this. I just thought it looked awesome and that I'd love to build it. And here we are. Probably going to follow this color scheme as closely as possible when it does come time to build it. I think the contrast between the NATO camo and the snow on the ground is awesome. So I might do a little base, a little snow scene or something or other. Maybe some trees in the background. We'll see. But for the time being, that is the inbox review. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until I guess see you in part two when we start building this. Thanks.